Hey guys, over the last couple of days we've been talking about descriptive writing. So I wanted to give a quick little lesson about descriptive writing. So if you're absent or maybe you're just not really sure about what we've been talking about in class, that you can get an idea of what we've been covering. Descriptive writing is writing that attempts to create a picture in the mind of the reader. We want the reader to be able to close their eyes as they read what we're writing and imagine it in their brain. Now this is a great writing style for any topic. So science and history and language arts all are going to use descriptive writing. And even if you're writing about Pearl Harbor and you want to describe what happened there as clearly as you possibly can, or maybe you're writing in history or in science and you want to be very clear about steps or how an experiment turned out, descriptive writing is all about using precise language, lots of details so that the reader can picture what's happening. And that's the first place we want to start is specific words, precise language. So we're not going to use just like the word run. We're going to use sprint or dash, okay? Uh, we don't want to just use simple adverbs and adjectives like very or almost. We want to be very precise about it. So instead of very, we might use extremely or unbelievably because that gives us a clear picture in our mind. And then we want to use adverbial phrases like uh, to give time information like he uh, quickly ran into the back of the store. And then to give even more information, we might add some adjectives. He quickly ran into the back of the dark and dingy store. Gives us an even more clear picture about what we're trying to describe. Now, next from that, we might even add in some figurative language. Now, figurative language comes in a lot of different formats. Metaphors and similes onomatopoeia and alliteration all are wonderful forms of figurative language so we might say that the dingy dark store was like a coffin if you use like or as then you're using a simile or we might say the coffinish dingy dark store or the tomb like dingy dark store to give that picture that's also a simile because it says it's like a tomb. But if we want to, we can make it into a metaphor. So you could say he dashed into the dingy dark store and the tomb surrounded him. Now suddenly we're using a metaphor. Or if somebody's running through the forest, you might say that the trees clawed at them or scratched at them with their with its claws. That's a metaphor, making it seem like it's an animal attacking him. In the piece that we read about fall, it says that the fall staggers in, or it moves stealthily. And this gives us an idea that perhaps fall is more like a person, and that's a metaphor. We also want to organize in an organized fashion when we describe something. We might use chronological or spatial order. Chronological would be describing something based on the order that it happened. So if we tell a story about a storm, we might start at the beginning of the storm, tell how it got worse and worse and worse, and then tell what life was like after the storm. Beginning, middle, and end. That's chronological organization. Or, if we're describing a tree or a room, we might describe it based on how we walk around the room. Or, if we're describing the tree, we might describe it from bottom to top or top to bottom. That's called spatial organization, spatial order. Okay? And we also want to use all five senses. Well, as long as it makes sense. And you want to use senses of smell and touch and taste and hearing. So as we've described our storm in class, we've described how the rain smelled and how the hail sounded like a hail of bullets as it hit our windows. And that all begins to create a picture in the mind of the reader, and that is what descriptive writing is all about.